What's good my roadies? Randy the REI Rockstar here. Thank you so much for joining me on this free training video. Today I'm going to show you how to stay organized in your real estate business. I call this REI workflow. This training should be pretty short but it's very detailed. So grab some notes, uh, turn off your uh, Facebook, get off Instagram and learn something and obviously try to implement it right away. Uh, this is basically out of necessity guys. If you're going to be in this industry you're going to want to be able to have your business set up as a foundation to run as smooth as possible. That includes your desktop right in front of you, your table, all those you know pieces of paper and you know, those books you have stacked up with your tea or coffee as well as your digital uh, desktop which is your laptop and your computer screen. So Let's learn this. Let's set it up, organize, and automate your real estate company for success from the beginning. This is absolutely free training. You're going to love it. Let's crush it. Let's get into it here. So, by the way, if you don't already know about me, check out the blog. It's the reirockstar.com. You'll be able to download a free gift by the end of this video by signing up for the newsletter, and you'll have access to six, seven other gifts for free as well. So here's what you're going to learn, guys. You're going to learn a little bit about the problem, the problem I'm going to describe in a second here, and the easy no cost solution basically so how to implement this immediately in your rei business and of course the best tips tricks and best practices so uh, at the end there you'll even be able to download the solution right to your desktop so does this look familiar to you by the way it does to me not only for my desktop years ago but and my physical you know desk here you can see the gentleman in the upper right hand corner there man that desk is a mess how are you ever going to be taken seriously as an investor? Not that sellers or buyers will see your desktop, but you're going to lose things. You might even lose a contract or two because you're just not organized. That's not good. So, um, you know, with my coaching students, for example, or when I used to answer support tickets on one of my software programs, I would share screens with the, um, you know, the, the, the tech support team would share screens. Uh, with the user and their desktop would always look like this. I was always surprised like how how in the world do you have Tommy's baseball photo next to a contract or an analysis on a deal? It just never made sense to me. So what you can see here guys is basically a bunch of shortcuts next to actual, you know, potential deals and things like that. That's not the way you should be running your company. It needs to be smooth from the beginning it's got to be a well-oiled machine and i'm going to show you exactly how to do that so you know by not doing this guys does your company does it currently need house cleaning do you need to clean up the mess in front of you both on your laptop and on your desktop you know when files and shortcuts and folders of business and personal property are all discombobulated you know it's quite to me it just stresses me out i can't function like that. I have a little bit of OCD. I need to make sure that things are in order in order for me to function at my best. It affects, at least for me, my mental performance. So I wanted to put this training together to show you guys how easy it is to do this and build this good habit right in the beginning. And, um, you know, let's get right into it. In terms of the solution, here we go. I call it REI workflow, and it's easy to implement. Think about having some organized folders that anytime you down, download something online or you get a physical uh, contract and you scan it, you need to know where to put it and not only where you're going to put it at that time, but how to access it later in the cloud. So I built these folders out uh, after years of just, you know, building them all. I finally, you know, organized them, put them all together, and then I had uh, built my team around it and given access to my virtual assistants, realtors, and, you know, so on and so forth. Let's, get, let's take a look at this next slide here. The outcome, guys, the outcome, excuse me, is one main company folder with 11 subfolders, which I'm going to share with you in a second. And under those subfolders is 152 sub-2 folders. And boy, the outcome is your files are going to be in pure organized nirvana. And it's just going to run you know, like a well-oiled machine. Be like water, guys. I want the outcome to look like this, right? Not necessarily the 19 <laughs> screens up here. That's kind of silly. Uh, that's like REI headquarters. But you get the idea. You know, uh, picture the Henry Ford assembly line, guys. When you get properties now, after this quick training, um, your properties are going to fly down the pipeline and hopefully have their best chance to make it to the 
title company in the closing table, right? So here's how you set it up. Here it is. With no further ado, these are the folders you're going to set up, and I'm going to have you just download them at the end of the training for free. So here they are. I'll give you a quick explanation of them. The first one is a legal department, and that particular department could be when you set up your business, your LLC, your corporate docs, maybe a lawsuit, hopefully not, right? Everything that has to do with the legal entity of your company is going to go in that folder. Next up is the HR, Human Resource Department. Guys, I've put folders in here to help you build a good foundation. And as you scale your company, you'll have to deal with VAs and employees, things like that. And all of their details are going to be going into HR, hiring, firing, things like that. And there's several things um, that I put in this folder um, so, so that we can easily screen um, you know, potential employees, uh, do check out their resumes and then eventually hire them and get them on board with, you know, official, in this case, I live in Arizona, Arizona contracts. Um, next up is learning. So this is huge, guys. How many times have you downloaded a product and, um, and or purchased something online? You stuck it somewhere and, and you totally forgot where it was, what it was, and it was sort of, you know, out of sight, out of mind. So this learning folder is a folder where I put all of my uh, products that I've either you know purchased trainings if I've gotten manuals that I happen to scan later I put it all in there and that's you know from everything from fix and flip to commercial to wholesaling um, assignments all that good stuff tax liens I mean that folder has it all figured out um, operations and you'll notice these are in chronological or order, guys, is as you learn the business, you then implement the business, send out marketing, and then do deals by number seven, property pipeline. So operations is next. This is the folder where we have our business models, everything from mind maps to how the phone system runs to mind maps of how a lead should move down a pipeline is all in operations. And anytime there's a business change, that's going to be in the operations area of your company. All right, next up we have, let's see here, number five. That's the marketing. Okay, so I want you to think about postcards and bandit signs and ad copy and email templates and websites, right? Online digital marketing, SEO, Facebook, Google AdWords. You can see it's a lot, guys. So those kind of things are going to go in the marketing folder. So remember, as you download things or you come into possession of anything that has to do with your company, not little, you know, pictures of little Tommy hitting that baseball, right, or kicking that soccer ball, you keep those two things separate. And no more will these things be on your desktop. You're going to file them into these folders and run your company smoothly, okay? After that, we've got the IT department. This is more of a stepping stone for planting the seed for something later on which is the IT department. Maybe you sell a product in the future or there's problems in your company and your employees need uh, IT support. This is going to be that department that you can build out. Everything's going to be kept in there, excuse me, and boom, anytime there's a problem, it's going to get answered in there. And if you have you know, the time to set up a VA who handles your IT support for your CRM or your Podio system, they're going to operate out of IT. Next up, guys, is the property pipeline, and this is part of that free product I'm going to give you. Guys, I'm going to give you all of these folders here, and this number seven here is going to have all the folders that I actually have um, within it. Okay, there are these other ones here have plenty of other folders, and I break them down in a full training, but this particular free product, you can download these 11 here, plus the property pipeline has got all everything filled out. I'm going to show you what's in here in a moment. So property pipeline, this is where you do your deals. You're a real estate investor, right? And this is the most important uh, folder in the beginning because it's going to help you keep track of your deals and stay on point, right? You don't want to, you know, get uh, property in and be running comps and having estimates done and all this documentation about the lead and the characteristics of the home and maybe a printout from your Zillow or Realtor and it's just all over your desktop. No. You can actually file it into the property pipeline. And let's go ahead and pause it here. I'm actually going to take you to my desktop here in a second, and I'll show you the live property pipeline, and I'll show you how to build it out. 
All right, guys, here I am on my desktop. You can see I have the free version that you're going to be able to download here. And if you double click it, you'll notice these folders all match up. Here's that legal. Here's the HR department. Here's learning, operations, management, marketing, so on and so forth. And here's that precious property pipeline. So guys, this is where the magic happens, literally, because when you enter into this property pipeline, I want you guys to think about if you have folders like this right now on your desktop, whether that's on your desktop without a backup on a hard drive or your desktop that's backed by Dropbox or, you know, what is it, uh, Google Drive or OneDrive that's, you know, offered by Microsoft. I, I can almost guarantee you that folder is just the name of the, ad, you know, the address of the property and there's no other folders in there. Maybe a comp folder. Tell me I'm wrong, right? So, in this particular case, I built out this system so that there is a folder for each property that's already made. And I also separated it by year so that you may have a property that you were working on three, four months ago, but it's just not clogging up not only your desktop screen, but it's not clogging up your pipeline. So let me show you it. Let's say it's in 2018, right? And you click on it here you can actually see the ones that you're working on all year. You can feel free to separate this again by month, but I thought that was a little overkill. So if you simply go to the working folder, you can see I have this deal here. It's 123 Main Street, okay? And I want you guys, I want to point out something very important here, guys. I wanted to build this with one simple rule, and that was that everything I could access is within three clicks, right? In other words, three clicks in, three clicks out. Let me give you an example. Let's say it's my title agent and she or he needs a copy of my articles of organization, my certificate of, uh, you know, that I'm still in good standing, certificate of good standing with the state of Arizona for my corporation. I would know exactly where to find that. How? Well, I, I obviously would put it in the operations area, right? Operations, I would open that up and there would be a documents there about you know my business here let's say uh, marketing department or yourself you you want to you just got a new um, mailer right and it's from yellow letters HQ or whatever it may be well that's gonna go in the marketing folder again three clicks in three clicks out let's say it's a property right and it's a title agent who says hey um, I didn't get that purchase contract right so you should be able easily to get in here right open up 2018, go into the working folder, find the property and come down to title work or the purchase contract on the buy side here or the purchase contract on the sell side. Okay. That easy guys. That's why I built this and that's why I want to share it with you because it's so powerful. There's also a new copy here. So anytime you want an other year, you just simply add it on 2019, right click copy, Name it 2019 and all those folders are already in here. Okay, now 2019 has that, right? It's got a master template so that anytime you need more properties, you can just drop the master template into that working folder. Okay, so let's go back to building it out. So we have the year, excuse me, we have the working folder that's on deals we're working on. We have follow up folder so that you know, maybe somebody asks us to follow up with them later in the month or year. We can take that folder, move it into follow up. Uh, and then we have dead deals, right? We're done with those. And we have completed deals. So in that working folder, if you're wondering where I got that, you know, one, two, three Main Street, all I had to do was copy this, you know, master copy or new property here. And I just copy it right into working and name it the name of the property. I try to keep everything in caps, guys, just the way I operate. It's a little bit easier on the eye for myself and my VAs, but I'll literally copy this and drop it in. Okay. Once I drop it in, I'll rename it, uh, you know, the name of the property uh, without the city, state, and zip. And there I go. I've got a nice folder with everything I need. I'm going to break these down here for you too. Everything I need for that property start to finish will all be in this folder here that I can share it. Um, always have access to it, even on my cell phone with the Dropbox app or what have you. So before we get into that there, guys, here's that new property here. All I did was copy it over before the call, and I pasted it on into 2018's working folder, renamed it. 
as easy as that. Once you have it in here, guys, a lot of us are using as investors call tools, right? These are call tools like call rail, things like that. And these particular tools usually have a recorded call. Um, and for maybe lawsuit purposes or misunderstandings with the homeowner, I would like to keep those for that homeowner. And now I have a spot for that in the call logs. I can drop them in there. I can link it to my CRM and you know have a manager listen to calls and how our admin or acquisitions is doing. All right, that's what that folder's for. Next up, we've got our due diligence. This folder is basically for things that the seller might have provided you or that your admin or VA has found out about the property. What if the property's in foreclosure? It'd be nice to have a copy of that notice of default. Whether you want to present that to the homeowner or that's just part of your underwriting. When you're underwriting a deal, you're going to want to have your due diligence of deeds and taxes and divorce decrees, anything the homeowner has, probate information, that's going to go in due diligence. Imagine having all this stuff, guys, by the way, all over the place on the desktop or in some generic folder. It just doesn't work. Three levels in, three levels out. I need a call for a particular property. I know where to go. Get in, get out. There you go. Um, next up, we've got analysis. So all these are built out for you guys. Um, when you download it, you'll see all these already in there. You can just drop stuff in. Literally, I hope that when you download this, you rename it the name of your company and you start taking all the garbage on your desktop and start sifting it in to all these folders here. Right? All your deals, rename the, create a couple new folders for your deals, get them all organized. And I'll show you how it ties into tax time and CPA and all that sort of stuff too. So again, back to the analysis folder, guys. I've got comparable sales here, right? This is the folder where you can share with buyers, maybe your private lenders. That's that analysis folder. Um, you can share that also on your flyers. If you've got comps and you've placed them in the analysis folder for 123 Main Street, that's where you're going to share your comps with your buyers or private lender. Okay. A repair estimate might have been done as well. You're going to put that as part of your analysis. See, it's all logical. Everything is under an umbrella. Everything goes, you know, in and out. Next up, we have the buy side. Guys, you're going to love this. Think about the time when you got your first contract or maybe you haven't and you just simply received the contract and you didn't name it anything, right? You just named it contract. Well, if you do that enough and you're looking to find that contract, whether it's physically on your desk, hopefully not, but most importantly on your computer, you're going to have contract, contract one, you know, Windows and, and a Mac is designed to name files automatically. So it'll name it a bunch of random numbers. So instead what I always do is when I, have a file named, I name it the address name space dash space and the name of the file. So it'll be like 123 Main Street dash comps or 123 Main Street call three, 123 Main Street proof of funds, 123 Main Street buy side offer, that kind of stuff. So take a look at the buy side here. With the buy side, guys, when you send your contract, a blank unsigned contract to a seller that should be saved you should have an original contract let me tell you why as a bonus to this free training if you add an addendum or change something right maybe it's the washer dryer comes with it or something in the uh, additional comments on the contract you're going to want to have a record of that number one for potential lawsuit purposes but more importantly the most common being Instead of writing up a whole entire contract, you can just simply go into the unsigned folder, re-access it, re-upload it to your DocuSign, and re-sign it and send it out. Again, when that file comes back, you should also rename it, you know, 123 Main Street, buy offer one, signed, and stick it in the sign folder. And finally, when you sign it as the, uh, as the buyer, which I hope you're doing, by the way, I hope you're not sending out contracts with you signed it because they can edit things and basically say, hey, the signature is already there. That's a good precaution. Send it just unsigned. Then you'll get it back signed and it becomes executed. Just boom, boom, boom in a row. Now you'll forever have access to just that contract. And that is so important when you're talking about the next couple steps. Next up is our funding. Funding is a place where you can use hard money in private lending, guys. If you have a separate analysis or a, something you want to send over or have kept 
from your funding or hard money, maybe proof of funds, that kind of stuff, that's going to go in the funding folder. Okay, if it has anything to do with 123 Main Street, in terms of funding or getting a loan or pre-approval or LSR, any, any of that sort of stuff, or a HELOC, right? Home equity line of credit or a refinance, whatever. That's going to go in the funding area, okay? Next up in this folder, very important, we've got the title, title work. The prelim comes back. You can stick it in there. Anything that needs to be cleared up, it's all going to go in the title area. Next up, guys, once you have a property under contract, whether you're doing assignments or fixing and flipping, um, and maybe maybe it's a fix and flip and now you want to market it to a retail buyer, you've got the marketing area. And this is where you're going to have, you know, pictures of the property, maybe some flyers for the property, and or a video. Uh, perhaps you have a video. Um, nowadays, you know, a lot of folks are using drones. And um, you can film those videos, put them together, edit them, make them look great stick it into that video area, share it with buyers, share it online. Finally, guys, we have offers here. Offers would be from buyers. You know, maybe they send you a purchase contract. Maybe they send you proof of funds, that sort of stuff. You want to stick it in the offers folder and stay organized with your offers. Now, let's say you accept one of those offers, guys. Guys, now you have an unsigned contract, right, sent over to the buyer. Or, or that the buyer sent to you signed, then you sign it, becomes executed. You save one in here, one in here, and you send the executed contract for the buy side, the executed contract for the sell side, especially if it's an assignment. If it's already done, you just send this side over to the title company or give them access to the folder or the specific uh, file. You're good to go. Finally, closing times come. We've got an A to B settlement if you're doing a double close. And we've got a B to C settlement. So all the closing docs and other closing docs can go into this folder. And then what are you going to do? You're going to cut this bad boy out. You're going to take it down to completed deals. And you're going to put that you either bought and hold it, buy and hold, or you sold it. Right? So that's how organized you can stay with this. And then guess what? Move on to the next property. New property, drop it and working. It goes down the pipeline. New property, drop it and working. goes down the pipeline. Now, let's move on from here, guys. Let's go back into this. Uh, presentation here and I'll tell you a little bit more about what else we have in store for you there we go so you've seen the property pipeline you've seen these first set of folders let's move on to the next step here so the next step is number eight it's called the employee courtyard or you can just say employee folder um, this is a place where you want to give kudos to employees right this is a place where if you do have a maybe a get together outside of work, uh, maybe you have a brick and mortar real estate investing company, this is a stepping stone of a folder down the road where employees can come fill out their time cards, um, you know, request PTO, paid time off, things like that in that folder. It's very related to HR, it's very related to management, but it's its own employee thing. It's also an area where you can put suggestions for the company, like maybe somebody has a suggestion about uh, change in the business model. Well, they can submit it in the employee courtyard. You give them a little gift card and it makes its way through operations or management, right? Um, maybe some employee in marketing has a, a recommendation about uh, the way you're doing uh, SEOs or who you're hiring to do uh, your offsite SEO, that kind of stuff, PBN networks. Well, you're just going to have it all in that employee courtyard. It's where everybody collaborates. That's why it's a courtyard picture. You know, individuals out at lunch in the in the courtyard at a brick and mortar place. That's where that's for. Okay, it's where you give kudos and goals, um, all kinds of stuff, and it's also um, you know just a good place for employees to chat. So next up, we have accounting. This goes without saying, guys. This is a business, so you need to keep track of your revenue and your expenses so that you pay Uncle Sam. And that everything you know makes it through legitimately through your legal department. So having a bookkeeper to have access to your accounting is very, very important. I'd go into more details, guys, but this is not part of this free folder. You know, just think of it as a place to keep your receipts, your revenue from flipping real estate, um, anything you're gonna write off, costs, all types of accounting things, right? So your bookkeeper can also have access to it and you'll be good to go. 
Now, finally, let's say you're in a rush or you're at a Home Depot in the middle of a fix and flip and you don't have time to scan something or take a picture of something and file it away into your you know, Dropbox or uh, folder through uh, OneDrive or Google Drive. Well, that's what miscellaneous and temporary is. And you're welcome to copy miscellaneous temporary and put it in any folder so that uh, other folks who have access to those folders can have a miscellaneous and temporary. So it's just somewhere where you put something quickly, so at least you have it digitally saved in your Dropbox account or what have you, and you can always move it over later. Have your VAs, you know, sift through these things and move them over later, guys. So, so that's that's basically how you set that up, guys. Here's a good outline of, you know, the uh, number seven, the property pipeline. is It's got the year, a new year copy, then the pipeline here of working, follow-up, dead and complete. Every time you need a new property, you just simply copy this and put it into working. Every time you need a new year, you simply copy this and put it into uh, the year. Actually, copy this and keep it in the folder, excuse me, and just rename it. Same with properties. You want to take this, you know, copy it, stick it in here, rename it, right? And then within this working um, folder, anytime you have a named property, Everything that's with the property will move along with it as it moves through your pipeline. So your call logs for that property, if you took 123 Main Street out of here and you moved it to follow up, all the folders in it are going to move with it. If it became a dead lead, it would be in here and forever you will have the call logs for that deal analysis. If you bring it back from the dead, you can take it back and put it in working. Guys, this is just, this is why I've set this up so that I can run my company, you know, as smooth as possible. So. Uh, that's that goes for that. Uh, let's move on with the training here, guys. Um, here's here's something awesome, just absolutely great about doing this, guys. Because not only is it for you guys, but it is for you know your sellers. It is very important to take care of your homeowners and your sellers, guys. So you know if there is something that you want to share with the homeowner, you can make a folder or use one of these folders to share with them. It's just as easy as going into your Dropbox or your Google Drive or your OneDrive account, right-clicking that folder, clicking share, sending it off in an email. If you're logged into these accounts, you can also share the folder permanently with this person and collaborate in the folder, meaning they can move files in, you can move files in, you can move files out. You can change information in there, save it, and it will real-time sync with them. But for the most part, sharing works just fine. You know, example would be sharing with the homeowner, sharing with realtors, cash buyers, private lenders, and even title agents and, and uh, rather real estate agents. So that is such a big, you know, relief, guys. I've literally been at title companies before and they would say, especially if it was a new title company and I didn't get to choose um, the title company I typically work with and that agent goes, hey, you said your VA was going to send over a copy of your license. You know, I can make one a copy here now. And I go, well, actually, what's your email? I'll send it to you right now. I'll literally at sitting down in one of their corporate chairs across the desk from a, a title girl. I will literally open up my Dropbox and just say, well, what's your email? And I'll with one finger just slide it over and send over a copy of my license, which is scanned and in my operations area. Right. So here's some best practices you want to apply, guys. Again, try not to accidentally rename a folder that you did not intend on renaming, especially if it needs to stay there. A good example of that is the new property folder. If you straight move this whole thing over, now you won't have a template for that. If you just straight move this over into this or accidentally down the pipeline, you'll never have that copy again. And you'll have to go download this again or try to remember best how it was set up, right? Or go in here and, you know, find an old one and try to rename it. So try not to just rename or move those folders because, or, or worse off, delete them. Um, now, one good thing about Dropbox, why I, I recommend having like Dropbox, and I'm sure Google Drive and OneDrive has this, is they can, you can undo, right? You can turn back the clock so that if something happens, which it's, it's happened to me before, um, you, you can go back and, you know, basically find all the, your old details about a, a deal or something like that. Um, number two tip, be mindful of access levels. You don't want to actually give, you know, grant grandfather access to the entire, you know, folders here, right? Which you can do, but you don't want to give a VA your 
accounting information if they're only a marketing VA or you don't want to give your employees access to you know your operations you don't want to do that so be mindful of who you're sharing and when that's why I like sharing just the links guys I think the link is so much better because it's temporary and you can always rename a folder and kind of you know get grant take away access rather than going in and sharing and it's much faster um, finally the third thing is uh, that 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 very tip which is to share the link versus the folder itself you know it just it's just so much quicker to just right click share the folder boom send it in an email or or what have you send it in a text if you have to so so that's it guys check it out this is how you get a free copy whatever platform you're checking this out whether it's YouTube or Facebook there should be a link somewhere that either pops up in the video or is right under the video in the description where you can go join the newsletter and get this and many other gifts you can get REI workflow the free version of this which has 11 folders as well as the folders within the property pipeline now if you are interested in the paid version you can actually get the additional 152 subfolders that's right guys so there's those other folders actually have a uh, high level just as much as the property pipeline does high level stuff and I have a 45 minute video that I actually recorded and step by step I show you um, you know what I use these folders for without having you build the folders I mean the whole thing's done you download the main folder it's got the 11 subfolders that you've just seen and then each one of those has a good five to ten folders in it so it's absolutely amazing if you want REI lead flow in your life guys I have a special bonus for you for those who don't just want that free version if you go ahead and get the paid version of REI workflow I'm gonna go ahead and put together a bonus I'll have it ready by tomorrow uh, a Gmail workflow automation in other words um, we all use, you know, an email account. Hopefully you do a separate email for your business. And hopefully that is, you know, domain heavy and actually has a domain of your, of your, uh, you know, business. Gmail offers this. This is why I use Gmail and I'll show you how to set up the same system. It takes literally about two minutes, two simple minutes of these same folders in your Gmail account and to have them automatically send in filters so that as leads come in they get filtered in your email sync to your phone so that you can all you can just you know do this process automatically anytime a deal comes in it goes to the pipeline right anytime uh, somebody emails you uh, a deal goes into the pipeline so that's a bonus video I'm gonna actually film later tonight and I'll add that in as a bonus for paid members guys so check this out if you like this guys give me some fire in the comments this was a very important video I believe because hey you know make messy a distant memory if you want to be taken seriously and you want to make sure you don't drop the ball or that worse that your team doesn't drop the ball when you're ready to scale this is what you use to do that REI workflow so check it out guys send me some fire if you have comments or questions Q and A's put them in the comments I'll be sure to answer them guys in the meantime visit the REI rockstar.com sign up for the newsletter and you'll get a free copy of REI workflow and a couple other free gifts so as always guys thank you it's Randy the REI rockstar checking out don't forget to floss that's tag follow like opt share in and subscribe have yourself a blessed day